Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Lafall, uh, Program Leader of Visual Effects at Sketch Studios. I'm going to show you a pretty cool webinar today. Um, I'm going to look at um, how to model a face from scratch in ZBrush. Um, this face took me more like two hours to make, as opposed to like the 45 minutes from the webinar today. But still, I'll, you know, so the, the purpose of today is not really like to make a finished model, but it's more like, you know, if you were to try and sculpt a face from scratch in ZBrush, how would you, how would you approach that? I mean, if you were drawing a portrait, you know, if you have any artistic experience, if you were drawing a portrait, you wouldn't start off with the ear or the chin. You would start off with some sort of like system or method. So what I'm going to show you now is the method that I use for creating a face. And if you kind of stick to that method, then the more and more of them the make you make, the, the easier and easier it gets, because you kind of understand how to sort of build it up. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to look at, um, yeah, we're going to start this off from scratch. So um, it, you know, it's a couple of things. We, I'm using this as a, a reference image. This is the sort of default Julie image, uh, which comes inside ZBrush. So I'm not going to try and copy this one. I'm just using this one sort of for proportions. And then this is also just an image I've got a skull because it's quite important to understand, you know, if I just look at this, it's quite important to sort of, you know, to have an understanding of the anatomy underneath, underneath the character, uh, whether that's muscles or ligaments or bones, because, you know, it, it gives like vital information. For example, this hole here is like where the ear starts. So you can see that the ear start the ear hole kind of starts in the middle of the head. Any all that kind of stuff. And then you can also, this is a male head as opposed to a female head and a male head in general has got a slightly bigger jaw. So it's easy to see that from, from the skull. Anyhow, we're gonna get started now. So I'm gonna um, get rid of this face, even though I made it earlier. So I'm gonna start off just with a, uh, I'm gonna start off with a Z sphere. Okay, and actually I wanted to, um, so I have my Z sphere here. I'm gonna save this for a second. I'm also going to work relatively fa fast. Um, but you know, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, I'm going to go to, I'm going to load up this um, demo head. Oh, it's not called Julie, it's just called female head. Anyway, I want, to, I want to use this as a reference image. So to do that, I can just position it over here inside ZBrush and I'm going to have the front and, and the side. Once I've done that, I'm just going to press T, go to switch. Drag it out again, have it from the side, have that one there, and then I'm going to press T, switch, and now I'm going to load. Well, okay, I'm just going to go to a pen. I'm going to go to a pen for a second, and the pen in a sphere. Oops. Sorry, that's silly. Ah, sorry, that's silly me. One second. So I made a mistake. <laughs> I'm trying to work so quickly, I made a mistake. Anyway, it's fine. So I've got this picture, I've got this one here. So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna press T and go to switch. Okay, and now I'm gonna drag out another one and press T. So, okay, so I'm gonna start off from scratch. So I'm gonna go to a pen now and I'm gonna delete this one here underneath. So I'm working quite fast, probably too fast to be able to sort of follow along, um, but it's more like getting a general idea as the kind of steps, the principles that I'm going to be using. Okay, so I'm also going to be jumping between using the Wacom pen and then also the mouse. Okay, so I'm going to start off, I'm going to try and, one second. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to rotate this to the side of the, the face. I can see that's the side of the face. I'm going to choose the flatten brush and I'm going to kind of flatten out the side. I want to make sure symmetry is on. And it wasn't on. Yikes. It's a bad start. Press X. So I'm trying to flatten out the side of the face. I want it to be a bit more flat than that. And again, one of the nice things about using ZBrush as opposed to trying to model it in Maya is like I can make so many different changes to the face. And then, you know, after I started making them, I can continue to, to adjust it very, very easily. Um, so like if you were to model this in Maya, you'd have to use reference images and then you'd have to pretty much stick to the front and then the side because you have to model every single polygon. Um, this is much more like pushing and pulling and sculpting. Okay. So once I got that roughly the right sort of width, okay, so I imagine this is on the top of the head. 
Okay, I'm then gonna to go to the move tool. One second, I shouldn't put this up here for a second. Okay, so I've got the move tool. And again, I'm going fairly fast because the one I made earlier, I made in more like an hour and a half, almost two hours. So to, anyway, I want to get that a bit closer is to try and work at a similar speed. So again, this is the side of the face now. Okay, and then I can I can see him in the side of the face because this is the side of the face there. But this is also going to be, you know, a good point to sort of look at the skull and make sure that's similar because remember I said the guy's face, that's a female head, the guy's face, are we making a female head? Yeah, it's slightly more, um, the chin comes forwards, but not quite as much as the guy's face, okay? So I'm gonna pull this down a little bit more. And you know, you don't, what you don't want to do is just jump in straight away and start sculpting eyes and then start sculpting a nose. You want to try and build up the whole form, you know, and then once you're kind of happy with the form, then you can start to work on another area. And then you'll, you know, slowly, slowly the head will start to kind of appear. Okay. So once I've basically got the structure of the face, roughly how I want it, that is roughly how I want it. After that, I'm going to try the mask. Oops. Interesting. Change this one back to here. Okay, so I'm just masking underneath the head. I mean, how big should it be exactly? About this big? It's you know it's difficult to say exactly. Um, you can always invert the mask and sort of adjust it. Invert the mask now, and then I'm going to uh, go to the side view, and I'm going to press W now, and I'm just going to move that down. That's basically now going to give me a neck. After that, I'm going to remove the mask, sort of smooth this out a little bit. Now it's almost you know you might be tempted to start sort of adding more topology. We want to try and keep the topology as low, not as low as possible. This already has eight thousand polygons, but I mean. Um, the, we don't want to start adding topology for a, a good few steps. Okay, we're trying to work on the, the base structure and we don't need to have topology, more topology to get that to work. Okay, let's smooth some of these parts out a little bit so it doesn't look so rough. I'll add more, to, I'll add more topology in a bit. Okay, okay, I'm going to also just hide perspective for a minute, but I mustn't remember, I mustn't forget to put perspective back on fairly soon. Okay, so once I've got the neck, you want to try and basically, you know, looking at the reference image, so this is the jaw. Okay, so this here is the jaw. So some important brushes I'm going to be using is the move tool. Another most very important one today is the standard brush. Um, very good for sort of just uh, Building up structural things that have a soft edge, you know, and things like uh, eyebrows and a jawline and the chin have got kind of soft edge as opposed to a sharp edge. Anyway, so I want to try and work out where the, where, where, uh, the jaw is going to be. So it's basically going to go to there. And then after that, I'm going to kind of push that part in there. So this part goes there, it goes inwards here. Then I can try to smooth that part out there. There you go, and that already, if I was to start, you know, if I was to draw this in charcoal or something like that, that is roughly how I'd start off the face by sort of sculpting out these areas in sort of big volumes. So, you know, also like when, when you start to work on an area, you end up adjusting another area as well because everything kind of works together. Cool, so, so far so good. I think, it, you know, it's, uh, you wanna be careful. Uh, if you switch perspective off, when you kind of get started, sometimes it's a little bit easier, but make sure that shortly after that, you kind of turn it back on 
and then just leave it on for the rest of us. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go in now and I'm going to mask out an area here. So this is where the ear is going to be. So you can see here, there's a little hole there and now it's just behind the jaw. So the, the ear starts there, the hole, and it kind of goes up around it. So the ear is not towards the front of your head. It's it starts in the middle and then it kind of goes towards the back. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to mask out an area like this. And again, I can, I'm not going to fuss too much about the position of it. I can uh, adjust the position quite easily. That is roughly what I want to go for. Oops. And I'm going to invert it. Okay. Now after this, I'm going to go to the move tool. So really, I'm jumping between some very sort of, you know, some of the core, um, some of the core features, well, the core brushes in ZBrush. So like the standard brush and the move brush, pull this out. Same thing for the bottom, pull this out. And you can see already that's starting to look like quite a nice sort of uh, the structure of a person's face. So I pull that out. You know, as opposed to a ZBrush where you're extruding, you're kind of here, sorry, pardon me, as opposed to Maya where you're extruding something, you're kind of pulling it out and then after that you're pulling it up. But it's a similar process, you know. And then, you know, um, yeah. And again, I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna build up the structure of the face kind of bit by bit, and then I'm gonna come back to every path and sort of improve it. So I'm kind of quite happy with the, the ear for now. Even though there's a very low amount of topology, I'm just going to press S for the standard brush, another very important one. I'm just going to go in and add some sort of basic, uh, so hold on Alt, I'm basically pushing it inwards a little bit now, just to kind of give a bit more of a structure. There's the top, top of the ear. And then obviously I'll have to go back in with more topology and then sculpting this a bit more. But again, for just the base, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so after that, I'm just going to uh, look at, smooth some of this off a little bit. And then I want to, uh, same thing with a standard brush. I'm trying to pull this part inwards a little bit more because the skull is like a big round thing then it kind of goes inwards a little bit and most of this part will kind of be hidden by hair but anyway now again because the face is literally is quite smooth a lot of the time you're kind of sculpting a little bit to sort of give a suggestion that there's a kind of bone underneath and then quite often you're smoothing it straight after and then you're kind of left off with just a hint of like um some kind of structure underneath the skin. And that's the whole part, you know, when you're sort of creating a face or a character or something, sort of create that structure so that you, so that you feel like there is something underneath it. And now, you know, you've got that sort of subtle hint there of like the skull in there. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go to the subtool for a second. I'm gonna go to geometry, I'm gonna go to divide. Um, Whilst we're here, Ollie, how are we doing for time? Can you hear me? Yeah, it's 15 minutes already. Okay, so, oops. So I'm just, I, had, I, had, uh, I subdivided it once, just gonna, because there is there wasn't quite enough um, details to be able to work with, and there still is, and after, you know, I will subdivide it quite a few times before the end. I'm kind of just subdividing it as, as I need to, as I'm going along. And again, I, I don't quite have enough detail right now to make the rest of the details, but just making that a bit closer to how I want it. Great, now after this, I'm going to go to the front of the head. Okay, you can, you know, this looks a bit more like orc ears because they're kind of going flat. So what you should really do is go back in there with the standard brush, bring them up a little bit. So I can either pull them up or just kind of start sculpting them up.
Maybe I want to go, if I had another one, another brush, if I press D for damn standard, maybe if I just try and push in, push that back down a little bit more. So the ears kind of go backwards and inside. And again, more topology will make it easier, but we're just looking for the sort of base structure. Cool. Okay, great. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to the standard brush. So I'm really rotating between sort of um, most common brushes. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna add a bit of a dent in here. And this is actually just to try and show um, where the chin is going to be. And again, every time you do this, you'll, you'll have it slightly different. Um, but, so I'm going to have a chin in there. Okay. And that chin is basically then going to show me where the cheekbone is going to go. So all these things are kind of connected. So I'm, I'm going to go back. Whoops. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to use a clay builder brush for a second now. Now I'll use a clay, clay builder brush a bit later. Um, it is a very good brush, but I think for right now it's one of the soft kind of forms. So this is going to be the cheekbones. I'll flow through into this. Again, sometimes you just want to sculpt like a little bit and then sort of smooth it off. So the intensity, well, it's hard to say exactly what it should be. A four, five, six, seven. And then once you've got this, cheekbones are going to go backwards. Oops, sorry, one second. Okay, I'm just gonna leave this here for a second. Okay. So that's looking pretty good so far. Okay, after this, I wanna try and, um, well, yeah, I'm gonna sculpt. Now I'm gonna go back to the clay builder brush and I'm gonna sculpt just a little bit more sort of shape of these, uh, the, the uh, cheekbones. And then after that, I'm gonna think about positioning the eyes. You know, it is a, you do, it's not like a, you click on something and then it's done. You don't have to sit there and you have to sculpt it until you feel like you have the right shape. So it is, you know, that their brush is sitting there and sculpting and sculpting and sculpting, similar to drawing or the painting. Okay, so once I got the cheekbones in there, I'm gonna think about where to position the eyes and the cheekbones are here. So that means the eyes are gonna be here. So I'm gonna go to the move tool and I'm gonna just, I know that they're gonna be here. I'm just gonna think about just moving that part in there for a second. Roughly where I want the eyes to go. So now that I've got this, I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna try the standard brush again. You know, when you're working on this, you might be thinking, oh my God, it looks like an alien or it looks like an Oscar sort of statue. It does, <laughs> it does at one point. And then at one point you go beyond that and then it starts to look like a face. Okay, so just have to have faith that if you keep on going, you can make it look as real as you want. Okay, so now I've got the eyes in place. I'm gonna go like this. Now the eye structure, okay, you know, again, Going back to this, your eyebrow, your eyes go back, and then there is this kind of arch, not arc, it's like it's on a sort of 45 degree angle. So I want to try and create that onto this. So I'm going to go to the move tool. I want this part here to go backwards a bit more. And this part here to go forwards a little bit more. So you, so you can see that, you know, even if I look at this, 
We've only, I've been working this for 15 minutes plus talking, but I've already got the structure of the jaw, the back of the head, the ear in place, and from the side, you can see that that's creating the right sort of shadow for the eye. So you can tell we're kind of walk, working in the right direction. It doesn't look completely wrong. You know, if, whereas if you were to just start sculpting from a ball without thinking about structure, it would look completely wrong for quite a long time, unless you're very good. Okay, so it is much better to try and have this sort of structure. Okay, so the side, um, that looks quite good, I think. Front looks not so good right now, that's okay. Like I said, just have a little bit of faith that if we keep on, um, keep on working at it, we can go to a good standard. So next, gonna push these parts back here. So I'm using a standard brush. So I'm pushing these parts back by holding out alt and sculpting inwards. And then just holding out shift, smoothing this part back. The eyes right now are looking a bit sad, so I'm gonna add a bit more up there as well. Again, very easy to tweak that after. And again, the intensity that I'm using for almost every brush is pretty low. About six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10, not much more than that normally. Okay. And then this one here. It's almost good like to have a goal, like what, What's the goal of this step? Don't just sit there and sculpt and sculpt and sculpt and then go, oh my God, what have we done? Try and think what's the goal for this next couple of steps and then try and achieve it, okay? And if I look at this one, I can see that, whoa, the face is a bit too wide. That's okay. Go to the move tool, go to the move tool, intensity quite low, start to shift it in a little bit. Again, you know, all these things we are gonna be adjusting. We don't want to adjust it too much. We want to kind of adjust it bit by bit. Again, it's almost like I used to spend a lot of time sort of drawing, drawing in charcoal, for example, and you're really just building up the sort of volumes and the structures, you know, and the big shapes. And then when you're really happy with them, then you can go in with the smaller ones. But you don't go within it. You don't go in with anything smaller until you're ha very happy with the biggest shapes. And sometimes you might have to work on one of these big shapes for five minutes or 10 minutes or even longer until you're kind of quite happy with it. Yeah, if I look at that, again, it looks a bit like an alien or the guy from Harry Potter without a nose, but I mean, I should know that because I worked on Harry Potter. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna sculpt this part inwards. That's roughly where the nose is gonna be. So now, you know, something that a lot of people start doing is just sculpt, start sculpting the nose outwards. You're gonna have to push the, you know, your cheeks go backwards. So you have to do that first of all. And then after that, I can go to the move tool. And I can just start to pull this forwards. How much further forwards? Well, if we had a reference image, we would know. But imagine if you're just playing around, sort of making a character. Well, we'll have a bit of a guess. And we can always adjust it after, which again is the, such the cool thing about sort of modeling in ZBrush. Okay, so that is very flat. It would have been good if I kept my other reference image there. Pull the nose back a little bit there. That Thomas, sorry. Okay, so once I've uh, once I've pulled that part out there, again, you know, really, I suppose the sculpting with the clay builder brush, I'm just literally using the move brush, to sort of pull out the features. There's the nostrils. Okay, the nostrils go inwards, just above the nostrils, and. 
just, you know, slowly. I'm literally moving it slowly and I'm thinking about every sort of move as I go along. And, you know, don't worry so much about straight away is that looking like the character that you want. You need to try and make the structure look believable. And then after that, you can just use the move tool and move it around as much as you want. Move this plane a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to push these, the standard brush again. Great, right, so it's starting to come along. Okay, so after this, once you've kind of worked out where the eyes are going to go, you can go, go back in a little bit more, uh, re sort of confirm, you know, a bit of the structure. For example, uh, if, if the, obviously as di there are different sort of uh, facial kind of structures, from people from all over the world, and some people have got slightly bigger cheekbones, some people have got smaller cheekbones, so. That's just kind of up to the kind of character that you want to make. There's also different, you know, different sizes of ears and noses and chins, but just try to use reference images. Okay, so the person I'm making is going to have slightly big cheekbones. Got a lot of character. And then again, you might realize that once you've got the shape of the cheekbones looking nice, you might realize that your jawbone doesn't really, you know, the jawbone is quite a big thing. It kind of stands out. So you need to, it's not looking big enough. I'd probably go back in with a standard brush as opposed to play builder brush. It's good for just bringing that back out. Great. Okay, after this, we can try and draw a bit more. We haven't really done very much with the eyes yet. So I'm going to go in now with a play builder brush. I'm going to start to try and draw roughly the shape of this and then smooth it a little bit. Oh, that's quite good. The eyes are pointing up towards a little bit too much towards the top. But again, these are all things that can adjust very easily. Great. Once I've done this, I'm going to go in now. I'm going to go in with a, well, I could use a clay, I could use a clay bullet brush. Don't have very much topology there. I'm going to try using the move tool. Oh, no, more, no more topology there. Okay, I'm going to try for a second just to uh, resort sort of confirm. You, you may not confirm, I say the word confirm. You really want to establish the sort of structure of everything. Okay, so I'm just going to go in the damn standard, the push, push in some of those areas to try and work out where the nostrils are going to go. And yeah, when I have more topology, okay, I'm going to add another, there's a divide again. Now after that, I can go to the uh, clay builder brush, push in the nostrils, end off the nose. And again, I'll have to have more topology, of course. That looks, that's all right. Okay, so I added another layer of topology. So I added another, I subdivided it. So each time I subdivide it, I can basically go back through each part. So I can quickly go to a standard. I can quickly do a couple of adjustments on the ear. So they now have more topology to work with. So it makes it a bit easier to sculpt some of these things. Sometimes the player on the intensity is no, it's if it's working too slowly. Okay. 
Okay, something like that. Again, it's not sort of the final thing. I'm just kind of going through each part, sort of thinking about, can I, can I work on this part a little bit more? So now I can go back to say the nose a little bit. I could sculpt a little bit more shape of the nostrils, shape of the front of the nose. That's quite good. The shape here doesn't look very good. And add a little bit more of a, a thinner arch here. That part can go backwards. And there's a bone there. Right. Now the mouth, um, what you want to do is you can't just start sculpting the mouth like this. Okay, I mean, you could, but it doesn't really work. Um, I just try to say the down standard. Now what I want to do is kind of work out where the sides of the mouth are going to be. So well, down standard, which is basically for, oops, kind of like this. So, and I try and work out where the side of the mouth is going to be. And it's going to be about like there. And then I'm going to go and go upwards a little bit in the kind of diagonal line. You can see that I'm sort of struggling a bit with the topology at the moment. That's roughly what I want to do. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and dynamesh it because I'm struggling a bit with topology. So I'm going to go step backwards for a second. I can, sort of, I can leave the point there. Okay, so I'm going to go to dynamesh and I want to have it relatively low, but a bit higher than I have right now. Um, so I'm going to try so dynamic it to about 240. No. Oops, come on. There you go. It's a better amount of topology. Now I won't have so, I won't have so many issues. Actually, sorry. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I want. I want. To, even though I want to struggle. Before I, before I dynamesh it, uh, I want to have less amount of topology. And there's a, there's, there's a reason. And after that, I'll dynamesh it. Okay, so after that, I'm trying to sculpt the shape of the lips. Even though I'm struggling a bit with the lines there, it's actually going to make it easier for me in a few minutes. Sculpt the shape of the bottom the lip. Looking a bit sad right now, but that's okay. We can, ch we can change it. You have to divide. Okay, I'm going to go to the move tool. I'm going to try and go to this angle like this. And I want the front lip to kind of come forwards like this. Might be easiest if I just mask the bottom lip so it doesn't sort of uh, affect it. Yeah, I'm just going to try and pull this lip further forwards like that. So it's got a bit of volume. Again, everyone's got different shaped lips, but I'm going with some with a bit of volume. Pull that. There you go. Do the same thing. I can invert the mask, do the same thing for this part. Going to try and sculpt that. Again, look at you know, um, the form starting to try and take shape. I want to try and I'll get a damn standard brush again, damn standard. Just want to try and put a kind of a crease into there. And then again, this, you know, again, I've used this one as a reference image. Uh, this looks a bit sad, not necessarily a bad thing, but, you know, to make it less sad, you can just go in there with the move tool, uh, add a little like that, suddenly a bit less sad. But I'll, I'll adjust that in a bit. Again, if I'm looking for the proportions similar to this, um, these lips are a bit smaller, so I can go in with the move brush. 
So that's the nice thing about working in ZBrush. I don't really have to have decided everything. Like in Maya, you're kind of modeling every polygon. And so it makes it easier if you have this, you know, you have like some concept art or working from a reference image. In ZBrush, I'm kind of, make, I'm not making up as I'm going along, but I'm thinking about the process as I'm going along. As it got to this stage, I think their jaw's looking a bit small, especially compared to this one. So I'm just gonna go back in. I could try the move brush. If that, you know, if it's moving too much of it, I can mask it, or I could just try going to the standard brush instead. And whoa. Don't want to give her a jaw like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Or Robocop. And then, you know, so I've given it a bigger jaw now. But, you know, for example, here it uh, comes down too much, I suppose, to this one. So, you know, as many reference images as you can. Some of them can be from photographs. Some of them can be uh, from drawings or paintings. Some of them can be from sketches. There you go, that's starting to look nice. Still looks a bit like um, Crichton <laughs> from Red Dwarf, the shape of his head. But I mean, you can just go back in with a, can go back in with a flatten brush, make that a bit rounder. Probably also a bit too much right now. Again, if I was thinking about proportions, I could always just adjust that. Look at that for a second and think, um, you know, is it, oops. Even if I'm not making this character, just for proportions, you can quickly, you know, as opposed to memorizing every single proportion. Right. After this, try. And again, I'm kind of working as fast as possible um, to try and show you the different sort of steps that I would do. I would normally spend a little bit longer on each one of these steps. So you know, um, I'm just showing you how I'd approach the nose, how I would approach the ears, how I'd approach you know, the mouth, that kind of thing. I'm going to subdivide it again. I, I didn't, uh, okay. I didn't use Dynamesh in the end. That's okay, no problem. I can always Dynamesh later on. Um, so we'll work a bit more on the mouth. So, you know, when you're sculpting, inevitably you'll end up with these kind of bumps. Okay, so right now I'm already on 2 million. I'm gonna go up one higher. And so that'll be close to, well, 8 million, great. Now you've got these kind of bumps. And these, you know, your face doesn't have bumps like this and um, you wanna try and get rid of them. So there are some nice tools. So if I do another brush, uh, Trim Dynamic is a great brush for this kind of thing. So this will really try and help build up the surface. So literally just use the trim dynamic and sort of sculpt on something and it'll literally just polish off those kinds of edges. You don't really want it, so if I step backwards, it works really well for something like the lips, especially like, like around, around here. This part's easy, but this part's a bit harder because there's a sharper edge. So if I just smoothed it, I would lose the, head, the edge. Okay. Also, if you smooth something, it averages everything out. The trim dynamic, Will actually try to polish off the you know it helps you to structure the surface so it's an excellent brush for this kind of thing so just need to spend a couple of minutes oops polishing off these parts until you feel like you know you do it and that that's starting to look quite good maybe it maybe looks a bit rough inside here but again you can just make it a little bit smaller try and polish off this side And just, you know, really good for helping to establish like the structure. Because again, a face with all the ligaments and bones and muscles in the face, it's all about sort of structure. It's not a big blob. And then it'd be nice to have a bit more of a sort of crease inside the mouth. So going back to the damn standard. Oh. Backwards for a second. A little, little bit less intensity maybe. And then if you hear me looking at reference images, so this one here goes down in the middle, then it goes down and up and then down. So it goes down like this. And it goes up. And then it goes down. And 
Now I can go back to the Play Builder brush. Let's try and improve the shape of this a little bit more. Just draw Play Builder brush, very good, but just draw, if you, you know, if you just draw a whole bunch of little circles on top of it, and after that's smooth, then you get it build up a nice kind of structure. So this is good. It's uh, you know different, different, you know, works in a different way, obviously, to the damp standard. But also very good for building up kind of structures like that. Great, another um, so if I go back to the okay, back to the dam standard now. Put that a bit more in the middle there. And then I'm just gonna draw a small little something like that, literally just sort of suggest the lip a bit more. A little line and then just smooth it off. So a lot of the time you're kind of sculpting a line to suggest some sort of like muscle structure or something, and then just smoothing it off. Again, if I was to work on this a bit longer, I'd go back in there for another sort of 10 minutes and sort of really work on the shape of this. Yeah, after this, I've got this shape here in between the nose and the mouth, and I can already sort of see that, I mean, this is a bit too low down. So I suppose to, Starting again, of course, let's go to the move tool, shift it up a bit. It's a great thing about, you know, this program, how much you can adjust it. Um, so if I get a standard brush, oops. something like that, I'm gonna go back to the clay build up brush. Okay. And then once I pull the mouth up a little bit, I now realize that this chin is a bit too big. So I can go back into the move. move. And I could either go to a lower subdivision level and then smooth it, or probably just easier if I go to the move tool and then just nudge up a little bit. Okay. And then, oops. Uh, after this, I need to try and think about um, uh, well, I need to put the eyes in in a second. Um, yeah, I could, if I wanted to give the lips even more volume, because there are different sort of shapes, um, I could try in a second. I just mask that out like that so it doesn't affect that area. Okay, ma masking is a, you know, a very good thing. Very useful thing, of course. Could try. I could try sort of moving it out a bit like this, um, or I could try uh, using the damn standard brush again. The damn standard, and then you know the lips, rather than sort of going down like this, I could try to have a bit more rounded like that. So the damn standard brush by default kind of goes like that, goes inwards, but if you hold down Alt, it comes outwards. Oops, come on. I hold that out, it'll come outwards. So this is also a really good thing for things like re-establishing where the eyelashes maybe are gonna go, or the shape of the lips, because there's like a ridge on there. So, one second, it says, uh, also save, how are we doing? That's 45 minutes already. Okay, I'm gonna go for about 10 more minutes, but I probably have to call it a day after that. Okay, so, damn standard brush. Oh, I meant to say, um, oops. I meant to hold out Alt. And that's too much. So lower the intensity. One second, everyone. Oh, sorry, everyone, my son's just entered the room. Thomas, you gotta go. Thomas, okay. I'm sorry, can you please take him? Sorry, everyone. Sorry, Okay, so I'm just changing the shape of the lips a little bit. This is maybe an artistic choice. Just good to use reference images so you don't go too crazy. And then again, and you might not like it, I could always step backwards. That looks a bit too wild. So I go to the move. Again, you know, you could, uh, as long as you use reference images, you can keep on going with that. 
Great, so that doesn't look too bad. I'd spend a bit longer on it, you know, looking at, sometimes it's good to, you know, once you spend sort of 10 minutes on the mouth, go back, go back and look at the nose. And then after, after you've had a break for a couple of minutes, you look at the nose and you go, ah, oh, yeah, so obvious, I, I forgot to do this. If you look at something for too long, you can just forget what you have to do. So if I just press the damn standard, go back in and now gonna like a more topology, confirm again, I keep saying confirm. That's just that's that's what I always tell myself. And you want the, the structure to. Quite often in models, you'll see something comes up and then it kind of comes down. It's basically the artist hasn't really decided what they want the structure underneath to be. So I just you know, have a bit of like conviction and basically decide what you want it to be like. Okay, another trick which can work quite well. If I just whoa. Okay, so let's do a couple more things. Um, oh, uh, if I just go to that, I'm on damn standard brush. Sorry, I'm on. So the, the, the wrinkled lines kind of come down your mouth. You don't want them to be very big or you'll look old, but everyone kind of has them and you have, you know, you have to suggest them. So yeah, they basically start like right here. It's quite hard to get the right curve. So I'll try doing it several times. And if it doesn't look right, I'll just stop it and then go backwards and step backwards. That's about right. I can try a couple more times, see if I do a better one. No, not that way. Just like that. And once I've done a curve that, you know, a line that I like, I can just press one. And then that will kind of just repeat it. So again, we don't, and then I'm gonna do a similar one here, but just sort of just to reestablish a bit of like the bone along here. It's quite good. If I had the same thing, but if I hold down alt. a similar thing to this, almost the opposite. And you, it just kind of brings up a bit of a ridge around, around, the, uh, around the cheekbones. And obviously we don't want to keep that line there, but it kind of pulls the polygons together quite a nice way. And then you, just, you can just kind of smooth out that line so you don't keep that anymore. And I might have to smooth it out quite a bit, but again, it can just help sort of build up the the cheekbone and similar to this I, don't, I only want to keep just a, really a suggestion of that line so I really have to smooth that back if I press one you know it should look too old or miserable and unless I get rid of that a bit more so if I just lower the subdivision levels it'll make it a lot quicker to smooth it and uh, sometimes you do something and then you go Oh my goodness, why did I do that? Or maybe it's inside of the wrong place. But that's a part of the artistic process. You know, you, there's a lot of thinking, a lot of learning as you're kind of going along. Uh, even though I, I quite like parts of this, some of these parts don't look very good. So I go back in, um, go back in, favorite sort of trim dynamic or something like this. You don't want to have this kind of like up and then down and up and down. It looks uh, slightly wrinkly or old and maybe you're making a young sort of character. Probably don't want to have that. So again, trim dynamic. Uh, it's just great, sort of um, po polishing off some of those edges, so that you're kind of really happy with them. It, it does take quite a lot of sitting there and polishing it, and then adjusting it, and then we might realise that actually I don't like the nose anymore. So I'm gonna go back to the move brush, pull this up a little bit. Maybe the, maybe the nostrils are too big. So I can pull this in a little bit. And after that, well, the eyes. Eyes, eyes, eyes. So I'm gonna try a similar thing. So I'm gonna to go to the damn standard. John, just saying we've got a question actually. Are you okay to answer yeah. what's just been working? Yeah, of course, go ahead. Um, so Lewis is asking, what resources, tutorials, books, or other materials would you recommend to learn more about character, anatomy, sculpting within ZBrush? Uh, and are there any artists you would recommend checking out? Uh, yeah. Um, I just uh, have to quickly... Uh, one second. So um, if I just type in anatomy, oops. Uh, nah, to <laughs> sorry, nah, long day. Uh, nah, to me. OK, 
Okay, and then if I just do ZBrush, can't, um, and then there's um, there's a particular uh, artist which I think is really good, and if I just try torso, because I think he's done a better torso than anyone else ever, maybe not ever, but I mean, there's one particular one, this one here. So if I just you know, so I typed in anatomy, I mean, if I okay, so anatomy, uh, ZBrush and torso. So this is a great thing to try and look at now. When you're, when you, if you want to try this, if you want to start looking at anatomy or characters or anything like that, don't just jump in there and put like pecs in a six pack because it looks, I'm not going to point out which ones it looks like. It just doesn't look very good. Okay. The body, if you look at a person, you don't just, the first thing you see is not just six pack and everything. So you really have to get the whole sort of, you know, the whole structure there, the similar way to sort of the face. It's not just about six pack and pecs. So one of my favorite examples of someone who's done this really well this guy here and if you click onto it you can go to his art station account um, and you can see so so it's a, a Glauco Longhi um, and that is just a phenomenal example of you know um, sort of a, a zebrush anatomical study um, and that that's the you know so if you were to look at um, you know some it's not so easy to get like a a, a model in your flat to, to pose for you but you can look at you know plenty of you know look at all different kinds of um, anatomical references, save them as images, you know, and then load them in Quadra or something like that, and then start to make studies from them like this. And look at, there's not just, when you look at this, the first thing you see is not the, the necessarily the muscles, it, it's kind of everything. You can see, you can see the chest and then you can see how the muscles are kind of pinching. All those parts are just as important as trying to put in a six pack, for example. Okay, that, it's those sort of things that make it look realistic. Not, not just putting, putting in the muscles. So, you know, definitely look at sort of anatomy, um, but don't just jump in there straight away looking at the muscles, thinking about the whole thing. You know, think, uh, look at the muscles, but then after that, look at different kinds of, um, or different kinds of characters and, and just start practicing. Um, I, you know, there are books, there are, there are plenty of books on Amazon. Um, and uh, I, wouldn't, I, 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 I bought loads of them as well. I think I bought almost every book on ZBrush. But then I got a bit tired of buying so many books on ZBrush. So I just, now I just use a, normally I just use reference images. You go to ArtStation, look at some examples. You know, if you wanted to buy some books, ZBrush. Um, yeah, so this is a, kind of a classic book. It's 10 years old, but it's kind of priceless, the, you know, the information inside it. Um, it doesn't really matter the fact that it's 10 years old. Uh, so there are plenty of books. Um, I have. All these books, I think. But in the same time, I think that there's nothing wrong with just um, going to YouTube, type, you know, type in anatomy torso or type in ZBrush anatomy. And don't think you have to make a whole character. Like I'm just making a face right now, you know? So, you know, just pick a part, maybe it's a hand or a body or a face, look at reference images and try and sculpt it. You know, and then when you get very confident with the whole body, the whole, you know, the face, then you can try and make a whole character, okay? Any other questions, Ali? Um, not at the moment. Um, uh, Sashib is uh, complimenting on how uh, cool it all looks. Oh, okay, cool. So it's, uh, you know, when you first put these things in, especially the eyes, you go, oh my God, it looks terrible. But if you keep it, and, my, and my, my, the one I made earlier also looked terrible. But when I worked on it for another 40 minutes, it ended up looking really good in the end. So you just have to, you know, when I say like have a, a bit of faith, I don't mean like a sort of religious faith. I just mean like faith in yourself as an artist that if you persevere a little bit more, you can get there to the, to the sort of the style that you want. Okay, so I'm gonna put those eyes in. I'm gonna go to lower subdivision level. Um, I should really pop an eyeball in there. So I suppose we're going to round out the last couple of minutes, right, Ollie? Because of an eye. Um, right. okay. So how big should the eyeball be? Should it be this big? Probably not, right? It's difficult to know because you can't see your whole eye. So is it that big? No. Is it that big? No. 
So how do you know how big the eyeball should be? Well, if I just scale it up for a second, if I move it around here, if you've kind of worked on the shape of the nose and you're kind of happy with it, if you kind of move it over here, and if it's about the size of that front piece of the nose, not just the end of your nose, but if it's about the sort of size of that area, that's about the size of the, the eyeball. Okay, so I can go like this and pop it back in there. Cool, so looking a bit scary right now, but again, it just takes a bit more time. I go back in with this. Standard. Here's another example of, you know, when people are doing eyes, you always end up with these kind of like blob, like little balls like this. So it's kind of quite hard to do, to do without it. So try, you know, try for example, a clay builder brush. And, you know, you want to try and look at, um, make sure you're using reference images as well. So right now, you know, if, I look, if I look into this one here, you can see that well, okay, I'm going to try going to the uh, dam standard. Uh, inverting that so it kind of sticks outwards. And then see, as soon as I use a reference image, I know what to do with my mouse. You know, if you don't have a reference image, you're kind of just making it up. And um, really hard to do a great job in any great artist in history. You know, going back to sort of Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, we use reference, you know, we use reference images for, for all their paintings. John, there's a, another question that's come in. Yep. Um, when it comes to modeling eyes, what sorts of tutorials could you look at when creating this? Uh, I'm a beginner at eyes and I find this quite hard. Yeah, um, it's a good question. Good. What sort of tutorials? Um, I don't have any sort of great tutorials offhand. Um, the main thing to do is literally just to sculpt the eyelid for, uh, you know, it, it would take me about half an hour to do just the eyelid, but basically you want to try and sculpt this area here and probably need to go up to a higher subdivision level. Okay, so first of all, oops, sculpt this eyelid and then see that it kind of comes down. I mean, the best thing to do is just to, you just look at just look at reference images like this, and then it goes inwards. So to go inwards, I'm going to use the damn standard. I can go inward. Oops, oh, sorry, inverted it. So it goes inwards. It goes inwards here a little bit more. And see, already that part starts to look a bit more interesting. But then there is also here. There is like not on everyone's face. Um, you know, there is a kind of a fatty fold here in the skin. And that doesn't happen for everyone, for example, but on this character it does. Uh, um, I, you know, me, I do. Um, so you want to kind of have this part here, first of all, um, sticking out. So that would invert that. And we go, well, the eyes need to have like a higher amount of topology, basically. Okay, so I'm going to, this is like the top of the eye. So I'll just try and explain this to answer your question. And then I suppose that'll be the end of it. Otherwise, I'll just keep on going for hours and hours. So that'll be the top of the eye here, but then you've kind of got this fatty fold. So what you want to do is basically, and it's quite close to it. So I'm just gonna have this here. Actually, just so I can zoom in. Um, okay, just so I can see what I'm doing. And, uh, One second, press Garrett's, no. So I'm just masking everything to hide us. Hopefully I can still see what I'm trying to do. There we go. So, um, so this part here, is that's the eyelid. And again, you kind of have to work on that until you're happy with the shape, but there's nothing more technically challenging. I mean, that's all you have to do is try to work on that shape. 
Same thing with the bottom eyelid, like this. It, it takes time, you know, like when you first do it, it will not look good. You just have to work on it. You have to keep, you have to keep on working at it. And then keep on looking at, keep on looking at it. Keep on working at, keep on working on it. And then so they got this one here coming out. And then, with me, then it goes backwards. So you kind of make put that crease in there. And it's quite close to the eye, but it's not completely parallel to it. So it kind of comes out a little bit, and then it comes in again. So basically towards here, it's much closer to it again. So it's basically, you need to be good at observational drawing. So, you know, remember in school when you're kind of like measuring everything with your thumb, that kind of thing, you just have to do that, but with your eyes and with your brain, just, just think about measuring everything. That's the, you know, a big part of sort of sculpting something. So once I've got that part into there, there is, you know, so I'm not saying this looks brilliant, I need to spend a bit longer on it, but again, I'm, I'm building up the structure a bit more. I can use a standard brush. Push the eyelid in a little more there. I'm gonna bring everything back because I need to have this fatty fold there. So what you could then do is I could then mask. To mask off this area. Maybe mask of this area as well because I don't want to affect that. And then this kind of fatty fold area. If I go to the move tool, move tool, basically just have to try and pull that forwards like that. And again, make sure you're looking at the reference image because it kind of it overlaps the eye here. But then it doesn't here, so I want to have it here. It comes forwards here, but it doesn't overlap it. And this part here kind of literally overlaps. And again, everyone is slightly different on everyone. They might want to go in there. If it's your crease is way too much, just smooth it out. And as long as you're using the reference image, we'll get there in the end. Yeah. Cool. So I know that, you know, so I didn't, this doesn't quite look finished at the moment. Um, you know, it would take me another hour to get it to the one that I wanted. Um, the one that um, if I just show you, you know, so I used exactly the same techniques to make this. Um, all, all the differences, I just spent like another hour just kind of sculpting the shape of the nose, how I wanted it, shape of the mouth, how I wanted it. Apart from that, the techniques I used were exactly the same. What I showed you. So there you go. That's how you sculpt a face from scratch in ZBrush. Um, you know, everyone, almost everyone in VFX has opened up ZBrush before and knows how to, you know, sculpt something like this. That doesn't really mean you know how to use ZBrush though. So, you know, how can you prove that you know how to use ZBrush if you go for an interview or something like that? Well, being able to sculpt a face from scratch demonstrates you've got a quite high level of knowledge of ZBrush and anatomy. So very good. So whether you're applying for jobs and you want to work as a character artist or whether you want to apply for a, a job, you know, or you want to apply to a degree or to what, you know, for, um, to apply to a degree course like Escape Studios or somewhere else. Again, these are very valuable skills and anatomical skills and sculpting skills. There you go, everyone. Um, hope that was, um, hope, you, hope you found that was interesting. Ollie, any more questions? Um, there is actually one more question. Um, do we have time? Yeah, sure. Sweet. Could you show us all that again? That's a joke. Sorry. It's, um, <laughs> would you say having a basic foundation in sketching or in clay sculpture would help with an understanding, help with yeah. and understanding the form? Definitely. So, yeah. I, I, you know, if you don't have that basic foundation, I wouldn't say you have to stop everything and go, go and do a sculpting course. But if you have a background in it, it will definitely help you. Like I, you know, I, I went to university 20 years ago. I did a, a bachelor's, sorry, I did a foundation course, a bachelor, a BA, BA and a master's. And I, I spent three days every week for five years just doing, you know, um, doing life drawing classes. 
So, um, you know, so having a strong background in anatomy and drawing will definitely help you because, you know, it's, it's the same thing. Once you've worked out how to hold down a space bar and choose the brush, <coughs> and then you're sculpting like this as opposed to drawing with charcoal, it's basically exactly the same thing. You know, you're sculpting the anatomical forms as opposed to drawing them. So, yeah, definitely, you know, and even if you've started sculpting already, keep practicing drawing as well because every time you sculpt, every time you draw, your brain gets better at drawing and sculpting, you know, and they all help each other. So, you know, um, yeah, you know, if, and also if you've never done this before, but you like drawing or you like sculpting or painting, if you like those kind of creative skills, then you will like sculpting and ZBrush as well. Almost exactly the same. <laughs>